Kathleen this afternoon. I got my pattern. I gotta grab my coffee. Coffee, coffee. I got my hook. Got my hook. Okay, let's see. Hello. Oh, I gotta turn my sound off. Over here. There we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a great week so far. <sighs> wow, we are here for part six, right? Is that, are we on part six? Is that what this is? <sighs> of the Dobby cardigan. Um, I have not been skipping ahead, so right now I will be working on the hood. So you guys can see my little, looks like a little collar that I got going on right here. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. Um, finishing up the hood. And I am on page three. Yeah, page three of the print-friendly version of the pattern. And the hood is 26 rows long, and I have only done four rows. So I have plenty to work on today to get this hood finished. Um, but I am hoping that we can move on to the, um, we can sew the hood up and move on to the front border. I think that'll be nice. I said Ellen is here. Hello, hello. I see Nancy is back from a week vacation in Florida. Very nice. Cheers to that. Um, we are actually looking. We are looking for a place in probably Gulf Shores, so it would be Alabama. But we are going to try to find a place that will. Um, allow us to bring our dogs since we have two dogs like an Airbnb beach house that allows animals um, to to go to the beach because we haven't been to the beach in forever um, and I think that would be really awesome so that is on our to-do list we did finally find the puppies a vet here in Alabama so they went and had their annual exams uh, last week. So that was nice to get that, to get that finished, you know, find them somewhere that they can go. Um, you know, luckily they're pretty healthy animals. We don't have to take them to the vet a lot. Um, it's usually just their annual exams. So, um, we just needed to find them a good vet here. They could do their, you know, rabies shots and all that stuff and just their little annual physical wellness kind of exam. Uh, so we got that done last week, and that was nice. Yeah, I hope your trip was good, too. Where in Florida did you stay? Um, do you guys have a place? Did you get a condo? Did you get a beach house? Um, I have stayed in... I'm pretty sure I've only really stayed in, like, Panama City. And that was, like, my freshman year of college. <laughs> so been a while. We actually had my, um, my stepmom's mother lives in Panama City, but she lives uh, on the other side of the bridge. So like she's not on the beach side of the bridge. So like we would tell people we were going to Panama City, you know, for Thanksgiving or something, but we literally never visited the beach when we went to Panama City because we were um, probably... I don't think it was an hour from the beach, but it just, we were there to visit grandparents, not to go to the beach. So, <laughs> Hello, Sindra. Sindra is here. And I agree, Ellen, at some point we will definitely have to do a meetup for everybody. I think that would be really fun. So yesterday we spent the better half of the day in our garden, um, in our front garden. So we have a really big front yard at this house 
and there's a couple of different garden beds out in the front that had just been really neglected. You know, there, there are still a lot of plants out there, but there were so many weeds and the leaves were still in there. So when we spent hours in the garden, um, replanting things, you know, there were, there were things that had grown too big. So we got to like separate out some of the plants. Uh, there were a couple of, of baby azaleas that were coming up from like the parent azalea. So we moved those um, and just did some rearranging. So fingers crossed that everything that we replanted makes it. Um, I am definitely not one of those green thumb people. I'm getting better uh, at not killing everything that I touch. <laughs> um, but that was really fun. Uh, I am so sore though. Like we did a lot of, you know, having to like dig things out and replant things. And I had to kind of rearrange some of the bricks that are around the garden bed. And, um, my neck is killing me. I said, I was really told my husband, I'm really glad I go to the chiropractor, um, tomorrow because I am feeling it and it is no fun. I did use the heating pad last night. That helped a little bit. Emma's here. Oh, Nancy said back in November, we went to Sarasota. Love going to Florida every year. Yeah, that's awesome that you can go every year. Our, uh, my sister-in-law lived in South Florida. So they were in um, the Fort Myers area, uh, but they just moved back to Alabama. So that was nice having them down there because we could go stay. They actually had a duplex so we could stay in one side. Um, but all the family moved back to Alabama this year, so um, no more relatives in Florida. Uh, and Emma said, is it my birthday? It is my birthday today. It is, yes. Um, we had a little celebration this weekend, which was really nice. Um, Matt asked me what I wanted for my birthday, and I said I just wanted it to be easy. Um, I just wanted him to, like, grill some burgers and have my parents and his parents and his sister and her husband come over um, and just have a nice little outdoor get together. Um, now that we have spa the space to do that, you know, we have a really nice space here, um, really big outdoor garage and um, a really big driveway. So we can kind of spread out outdoors. So as the weather gets nicer, I think it'll be easier for us to have more of those kind of easy get togethers, you know, where we just have people over, um, you know, for a grill out or something. Thanks guys. That was really sweet. I know I kind of questioned if I should go live on my birthday. Um, but I mean, it is just another day. Like it's exciting, but it's, um, you know, it fell, it fell on the live day. So why not? Why not spend part of my birthday with friends. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we'll do anything today. Um, I'm making a pizza tonight, which is one of our favorite things to, to eat. Um, we thought about going out. I don't know if I really want to spend the money. <laughs> I'm a stickler. Tax season was rough this year. It makes me not want to spend any money. But you know, we were talking, my husband and I earlier, you know, we just like to buy each other gifts when we want to. So, you know, the whole idea of buying gifts around specific holidays hasn't ever really been our thing. Um, you know, it's more like once we have the money and we want something, we'll just get it for each other, you know. Um, so that's why I was like, well, I mean, I guess we could go to, out to eat tonight, but we don't have to, you know, we could save it for a weekend or you know, like we just had our, the family get together. So I don't know. We'll see. We like to play it by ear. That was like yesterday. We, um, we had no plans specifically to work out in the garden and ended up spending like the entire second half of the day, um, in the garden. We just got, got some momentum and got moving, you know, <laughs> I believe someone asked, Yes, Ellen asked how my outdoor table is coming. So the pollen right now is really bad. So um, 
even though we have had a couple of days that have been pretty nice weather and I probably could have put the second coat of paint on the first chair. So um, just so you guys know, I am repainting, well, painting a dining room set that's like this big wooden dining room set that we brought over from our house in Georgia that does not fit in our house <laughs> here. So it has been sitting out on the back porch, which it's covered, but it's obviously exposed to all of the elements. Um, you know, it doesn't really get, it doesn't get rained on, but you know, everything else, humidity and heat and cold. And so um, we knew we needed to do something with it because it's not gonna last out in the elements like that for very long. And like the seat cushions are starting to get a little moldy. So uh, I decided um, that I wanted to try to paint it. And so we bought some porch paint so for like porches and things, uh, since it is wood and I sanded the finish down and I put my first coat of yellow paint on one of the chairs. It's like sunshine yellow. Um, and it seems like it's going to stick. So fingers crossed it's going to work. Uh, we had one really pretty day before the pollen had started getting bad that I was able to get that first coat of paint on the chair. Um, I'm going to recover the cushions with, um, some outdoor type, indoor outdoor fabric. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, let's see. Tracy said, I made it live today. Have I missed anything? No. So, um, I am working on, I'll show you guys. This is my hood. So you can see my little sleeves right here, here and here. This is the back side of the hood and I have to do, well, it's 26 stitches or 26 rows for everybody on this pattern. So unless you want to make your hood more oversized and you can make it longer, um, I'm making mine the 26 rows listed in the pattern. Um, and then you're going to work across, I think in my last video, I went through the exact, the exact number, but I am doing 22 stitches across for the small slash medium size. Um, but this will take up most of the video, me finishing up the hood, but I am hoping that I'll have time to sew it up and start on the front panel. And in that case, I'm going to flip the camera around so that you guys can see how I sew the hood up and see where I join to start the front panel. So I think that will be nice, especially if anyone is watching the replay and is looking for specific instructions on how to make it. Emma, I can't wait to see how your table turns out. My kitchen is in the process of being redecorated. It will look like a Skittle factory exploded. What all are you, are you like painting your cabinets crazy colors? You said your kitchen is being entirely remodeled. Um, what are you gonna use as your bright colors and like what's going to be decorated. Um, when we moved in, everything here was pretty much move in ready. We replaced the flooring because it was just like a wood laminate, um, like a cheaper wood laminate. And we wanted to, we'd been wanting to try the luxury vinyl plank flooring, um, which was cheaper than hardwoods. And we didn't really want to have carpet through the whole house. So we did the laminate. I mean, the vinyl plank that which is in here and then we did the bedrooms in carpet and uh but the kitchen they had painted the cabinets so the cabinets are like a gray and it is pretty i mean they they did an okay job it was you could kind of tell it was a rush job to paint them i think probably to try to sell you know um but the countertops are granite which is nice we never had granite countertops um so it's, it, you know, there's nothing really, I don't see myself trying to renovate it anytime soon just because it was so move-in ready. Um, but at our old house, it was like everything was this weird wood laminate and this really orange wood. And I always had like this dream of re redoing that kitchen entirely, um, which obviously we didn't stay there long enough to do that. But the one here, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I'll paint it. I think I think that doing this dining room set will really give me the confidence to do more paint projects that aren't just like paint on the walls. Cause that always feels overwhelming for me. Like the idea of repainting my cabinets in my kitchen always felt very overwhelming. And I know it's 
not, you know, if you do it right and you just take your time. Um, but I really do think that this, this project outside will give me a little bit more confidence in my skills to paint things other than just walls. Cause I, painting walls is easy for me. I enjoy it. It's, you know, it's, it's a project that I'm very confident in. Um, so I've painted, I've painted a lot of walls. <laughs> That's like these, I painted all the walls in here and, um, painted our kitchen, painted our dining room, painted our hallway, painted the living room. Um, I still have to paint both of the bedrooms and the bathroom, but that's pretty much it. Once that's done, the only thing that will be left is like the basement. And I don't know, it's kind of partially finished. So I could paint it if I wanted to. Um, we shall see. I needed a break though. After that first month of being here and all of the, the initial projects, I just said, okay, I need to take a couple of months before I start painting again. And the cost of paint has gone up so much. You know, I wanted to make that outdoor set. I was going to do a different color for the table and a different color for all of the chairs. So it was going to be like yellow and pink and blue and green and orange for all of the different items. But when we went to buy the paint, I just wanted to buy one gallon just to see if it would cover the chair you know, if I could get it to stick. Um, and it was almost $40 for that gallon of paint. And they don't do the smaller paint cans for the floor and porch paint. So they don't do like the, um, I guess it's like a half gallon, the, the little sampler ones. And it's bigger than the samplers. It's like a, like a half gallon, but they don't do those for the porch paint. So I would have to get like six gallons of paint if I wanted to do all different colors. So I have a feeling that it's going to be just a yellow set, like everything's going to be yellow. And then if I decide to go back and paint over it and make it a different color, then I'll do that. But um, yeah, I don't really want to buy six cans of paint at 40 bucks a can. <laughs> Not right now. Um, okay, Emma says... The walls will be vibrant green, yellow curtains, multicolor utensils, crochet, multicolor tablecloth, cushions for the chairs, and crochet rattle fruits in a bowl on the table for the cats and the kids. That sounds awesome. I can't wait to see that. You need to share pictures of like the before and after for sure. And are you guys doing all of the work or do you have someone coming in to help you? And what colors are your cabinets? Are you doing like crazy colors on your cabinets or are they just white or what is that like? Definitely share pictures. I want to see pictures of this. I think that sounds awesome. Crochet me pink. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. All right. I'm getting there. Let's see how many rows I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. I have 12 rows. So I am working, working. And plenty of time. We are only 20 minutes in, so I have plenty of time to finish this hood. I have to say, though, my, my hands and arms are sore from being out in the garden. And um, I'm trying to, like, keep my neck from being bent all the way down. I'm trying to keep my chin up a little bit and just look down towards my work. I think that will help a little bit not to be too sore. So another reason that my hands are sore, like my arms are sore, um, one of my birthday presents was a set of, um, what is it called? Like the rackets for, um, oh, what is it called? Where you have the little, um, oh my gosh. What's the racket game where you have the little thing that's got the little nose on the end and then the little thing that comes off of it and you hit that? I forget what it's called. I can't remember what the game is called or the little the little thing. But he got me some of those rackets. Badminton, exactly. So we got the rackets and it's to hit carpenter bees. <sighs> so we have all of these carpenter bees that are drilling holes into our porch. And um, they did it in Georgia too, but the bees in Georgia were 
pretty lazy, so it was pretty easy to like hit them with stuff, but we never went and found rackets. We always said that we were going to go to a thrift store and find um, like tennis rackets and we never did. And so he went on Amazon and got a set of badminton rackets and we've been out there killing bees with badminton rackets. <laughs> um, and we haven't put any kind of dent in the carpenter bee population. They are still out there happily drilling holes in our, um, in our porch. Um, but I got a few of them, you know, but I didn't realize, like, I was working out the sweat. Like, I had a, had a pants and boots and a sweatshirt on yesterday, and by the time I took, like, I don't know, six to ten swings with the racket, it was time for me to change clothes <laughs> because I'm having a chase after these bees. Uh, but that's been fun. Our dog hates it. Uh, he, he has to, um, have to put him inside. I think uh, he thinks that we're going to hit him with the rackets and not the bees. <laughs> I swear you would think someone beat that dog, but we got him when he was like six weeks old and everything makes him nervous. Everything. Um, I keep saying I'm going to get him one of those um, like thunder jackets, like the anxiety shirts, you know. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have ever used those on your dogs. We have this little harness that I say little and he's a big dog. So we have a big harness that, you know, wraps around him and it's got a little handle on the back and you can attach a leash. But um, when I put that on, it tends to calm him down. So I figure that those anxiety jackets would probably work for him. Um, I think it might be worth the investment because, yeah, everything makes him anxious. I know that my husband tried to get a video of me swinging the racket at those bees because I kept missing. So then I just looked like a wild, crazy person swinging the racket around in the backyard. <laughs> Somebody asked what we got planted. Tracy asked what we got planted. So we planted, um, when I had my birthday party this weekend, my sister-in-law gave me a bunch of, um, seeds and things to plant and some of them were bulbs for gladiolas I think is what the, what it was um so she got me two big big bags of bulbs for gladiolas it's like 20 something gladiola bulbs and um I got those planted in the front yard uh in the front garden beds and um we moved a lot of things around so like I said the the beds had been pretty neglected um, over the last couple of years. And so things had grown together really thick. So we like separated a bunch of things out and moved them around and like re adjusted things in the bed and just got like leaves and weeds and stuff out. And it still needs a lot of work. I'll have to show you guys. I'll see if I can do, um, I'll share some pictures in the Facebook group. If you guys aren't in the Facebook group, you can uh, join in and um, I'll have to share some pictures of the front of the house where the garden beds are. I may have to just do like a tour of the garden, tour of the outside of the house one of these days. I don't know how well the signal would work if I go outside and try to stay live. I may just have to do a video. Um, but it's pretty cool. I mean we've got a really great space for doing a lot of things. I mean we already know of at least three or four areas in the front and the backyard where we want to do like a seating area. Um, even if it's just like a little bench. And, um, I think that would be really fun. You know, we're also trying to get more birds. So we've got three bird feeders right now that are active. One of them we're actually trying to, um, the birds haven't come to it yet. So we're hoping they find it and actually want to start coming to it. But I feel like once we get all of these different seating areas, I can probably do videos um, outside and have like that nice natural background noise of the birds and all that fun stuff. So that's part of the goal. Emma said, I did a crazy, I did a crazy this week, crocheted a poison apple with DK yarn and a one millimeter hook. Oh. I can't remember the smallest hook I've used, but it was whatever size I used to make rings out of embroidery thread. So I used to make these little friendship rings 
Um, and I would buy the embroidery floss and embroidery thread stuff that you can buy like in the packs, you know, at Walmart or wherever. And I don't remember what size hook I used, but it had to be pretty small because, you know, it was a, a tight stitch, but the yarn was kind of stretchy. So um, it fit a whole bunch of different finger sizes, but I, that's the smallest thing I've ever crocheted. And uh, I need to look and see what size that was. I need to write the little pattern up and just do like a little pattern on my blog because those were fun, especially for like summer craft shows. I would do, I would call them friendship rings and you would get two of the rings to a pack and uh, people could share them. Cinder said, film a walkabout. Exactly, I think that's what I'll have to do. I'll have to just do my regular camera. Um, or just on my phone, but I could film, you know, around there and share it to like my YouTube channel here so people can see it if they want to. And I can share that in the Facebook group. Yes, yeah, same, Ellen. Ellen says, what was your inspiration to create such a tiny apple, uh, Emma? And how do you make a friendship ring? So um, I just did, I, I worked in the round, so I just did the chain and then joined the chain chain one and then worked around the chain and I joined on each row. So it was very, very simple. It's just single crochet stitches all the way around joining after each round. So you had a teeny little seam, but not super visible. Um, and I would make those, like I said, out of the embroidery floss and I would get different color embroidery floss uh, or thread to use. Um, and I would make two rings of the same size and I would slip them over a little piece of cardboard and kind of package it up pretty. Uh, so people would buy the set of two and it was like the friendship rings. But that was a fun little kind of summer craft show project. I will have to do that. I was going to do a collaboration with Anna from the Naughty Boss. If you guys don't follow her, you can check her out. I think she's got a YouTube channel too. Uh, but my interview with her is here on my YouTube channel and it's got all the information about her where you can find her stuff. But she makes um, the printables for crochet items. So like if you sell at craft shows and you want to kind of take your packaging up a notch, you can buy labels for different very specific products from her and dress them up so that, you know, your packaging looks cohesive and professional and all of that. So, um, but I was going to do a collaboration with her on the friendship ring. So she would create a cool label and packaging piece for the friendship rings. Um, and then my pattern would be linked, you know, to that so that people could use it. Let's see. Uh, Emma says the apple turned out pretty big. Yes, please do share that on Facebook because I've seen those apples. Um, and I'm wondering, I don't know if you shared it on Instagram or somewhere, because I've been seeing a few posts about those. Crochet Me Pink says, my kids and I used to go to Fort Myers Beach, prefer no sand, stayed in Naples at a hotel, love the pool with palm trees and being able to see the bottom of the pool. Yes. So, um, yeah, we would go to, uh, we went to Anna Marie, Anna Marie. <laughs> and it declined automatically. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah, we, uh, we really just hung out like in the down, downtown Fort Myers area. There were a couple of like the rocky beaches that we went to. I can't remember the name of the beaches, but we did stay um, on Anna Maria Island for a couple of days with his parents. That was really fun. Um, I like the beach, but I feel like growing up, I was definitely a pool person. So my parents would go to Gulf Shores every year um, and we'd stay in like a condo and I always preferred hanging out at the pool to hanging out at the beach. Um, I felt like I always had the worst luck, like I would be the one to get stung by a jellyfish or something in the, the water, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> or get sunburned really bad. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Crochet Me Pink. Yep. Birthday live, birthday live. <laughs> I already had plenty of cake. I don't need any more cake. Ay, ay, ay. I'm gonna take some coffee though. And get my jitters out and drink more. <laughs>
And I said I will share my punk mermaid too. So I'm guessing that's like a cat mermaid. That's what that sounds like. Uh, Tracy, happy birthday. Isn't today? Yes, today is actually my birthday, uh, the 29th. Uh, oh, and Nancy said that's where we went last week, Anna Maria Island. Yes. So um, we've definitely, we stayed there for a little while. Where am I at? Oh, I'm only at 30 minutes. We got plenty of time. I will definitely finish this. I am now at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 19, row 19, and I need 26. Okay, we are getting there. So yeah, I was definitely a pool person. Uh, my first job was a lifeguard. So when I was 15, I was a lifeguard. Oh, and my computer just went to sleep. Can't have that. I'm not gonna be able to see my comments. There we go. Um, yeah, I was a lifeguard at 15 and I continued to work as a lifeguard, I think until like 18 or 19. Um, I feel like my last lifeguarding job was at a summer camp, uh, my freshman year of college. Uh, so that was fun, but that was, that was a good job. I, I enjoyed that. I liked being able in the summer to be outside and, you know, it was, it was nice. It was a good job. Um, it was not a soul sucking job, <laughs> especially not for a 15 year old. So it was a good summer job. Did camp counselor for a little while. Um, I did not like lake water. That was something because the camp that I went to for years, I went to Girl Scout camp for God, like 14 years. Um, and I was never a huge fan of lake water because of not, you know, not being able to see the bottom. There's all this like icky stuff on the bottom. And um, the, uh, they always had to put like the drops in your ears, you know, to keep you from getting an ear infection. I hated that. Um, I was a pretty good swimmer and for me, I didn't, I hated swim lessons because, because I was in the higher swim lesson group, you never got to have any fun. You had to like, you know, swim all these laps and, you know, tread water and, and do all of this crazy stuff. And I was like, can't I just go back to like the level one swimming level where I get to like blow bubbles and play in the sand <laughs> for an hour instead of having to be drilled on, you know, 50 laps and different types of swim styles. <laughs> That was not, I definitely wanted the free swim, but, um, yeah, the lake water was definitely preferred pools to lake water. Brittany, I'm using my first pink sheep hook right now and I love it. Woohoo! Brittany, remind me which hook you got. We have had quite a few, um, people purchasing their very first pink sheep hook the last couple of weeks, uh, in about maybe the last month. So that's been really exciting. I always get excited when people buy their first pink sheep hook and, you know, get to hear their feedback on how they feel about it. Um, and remember when you buy a pink sheep hook, you automatically get to be part of the hook club, which gives you discounts and things, you know, um, special discounts, little perks. Um, you get to help us decide on new colors and things like that. Um, so it's fun and it didn't cost anything. You just, if, if you have a pink sheep hook, then you're in the club if you want to be in the club. Uh, so that's been fun. And um, so you guys know club members will get to be the first to try out new things. So, you know, we actually just started printing smaller hooks. Um, I always said that we were never going to make hooks smaller than a 10 millimeter because that's really the smallest hook that I used regularly. Um, but we've had so many people who have been following us and purchasing our hooks asking us to make smaller sizes that we were like, okay, well, we'll give it a try and you guys can test them out, make sure that they're going to hold up. Because our biggest thing is we want them to be strong enough to manage regular projects, you know, so I've never, I've never recommended our hooks for like amigurumi or super tight stitching because in the end they are not metal. Um, you know, so I think, you know, if you're going to be doing something that requires a lot of um, pressure to be put on the hook, then you probably want to do a metal hook anyway. You know, that's how I always was. If I had any specialty wooden hooks, I wasn't going to use them if it was going to be something that I was worried might break the wood. Um, I would usually use metal, but we 
made our first run of eight millimeter and nine millimeter crochet hooks. Um, and our hook club members were the first ones to try them out and they are, the first run is sold out. Uh, I sent out the email um, Sunday, I think, and uh, shipped all of them out yesterday. So it <laughs> uh, did not take long for us to run through those. Um, and I'm hoping that everybody likes them as long as they hold up well and everybody likes them, then we will start adding them to our regular releases. So if you have not bought a pink sheep hook, you could start out with that size, you know, if you wanted to, um, the eight millimeter or nine millimeter, because as, like I said, as long as we get good feedback, we should be able to release um, in April to everyone. So uh, when I send out my general email, um, the April hooks should include the eight and nine, unless we get any additional feedback that they don't feel like the hooks will hold up, but it sounds like they're holding up good. Emma says, I would love to be a lifeguard, but I can't swim, I sink. So it's interesting, my grandmother, um, anytime I hear of someone saying that they sink, because I've, I was always pretty good, like I said, I was a pretty good swimmer, um, I struggled to float on my back. You know, that was one, you know, my butt always sunk. So like when I would try to, to lay up, lay flat on my back, my bottom half would always kind of sink down, but I could keep like my, my upper half above the water. Um, but my grandmother used to really love to swim. And when I was probably in college, I think she got lung cancer and they had to actually remove one of her lungs. So she only has one lung and she went swimming, I guess, after her surgery, you know, once she'd gotten healed enough to do so. And, um, she was like, I completely forgot how much your lungs are a part of allowing you to have that buoyancy. And she was like, I can't float worth the crap now. You know, she's like, I just sink. So <laughs> I guess she only has one lung. So that was really interesting. Brittany got the pink 12 millimeter. Yes, so those hot pink ones were definitely, um, and we still have a few of the hot pink ones. I think we have like a 14 and maybe 17 or an 18 or something. Um, but I loved those hot pink ones and that was very, very much so the, the pink sheep um, standard for, for a pink hook. Um, I feel like that's one that I'll need to revisit because I feel like being the pink sheep, I need hot pink hooks in the shop 24 seven. So we may have to revisit that color uh, and do another hot pink release. But I think it's pretty cool that we haven't had to repeat colors. Um, even the, even next month's release, I haven't announced the color yet, uh, but it will be a new color. It's one that we have not released yet. So it's exciting. Uh, Tracy said, I would love to have a 13 millimeter hook when y'all make any more of those. Okay. So what we have thought about doing and, you know, being that we're doing this full time now, we're always having to be thinking, okay, what's next? What's new? What can we do? That's going to be helpful and interesting and something that people, you know, could use. And we have thought about trying to start releasing half sizes. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know here. Um, I mean, I'll definitely be reaching out. Um, I think the hook club members, I'll probably do a poll to see if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, I may put it out on Facebook and see what people think. But um, for instance, I know 11.5 is actually a standard hook size. Um, it's not super easy to find, but um, we've thought about starting to include some half sizes. Uh, so 10, five, 11, five, 12, five, um, maybe 12, five and 13, five, since, um, the captain, AKA my husband says that 13 is unlucky, which is the whole reason we don't make one. Um, so we thought about doing like a 12.5 and a 13.5. <laughs> so you could have eight on either side of that. Um, yeah, we have only done 13s once and that was for the last year's Halloween mystery boxes. So that was um, his way around it. it. was like, they're just for the Halloween mystery box. 
And I don't know if people would want the same size, so I'm trying to think forward to the Halloween 2022 mystery boxes that we're going to do um, as to what we should do. If we should do 13s again in a different color combo or if we should do something else. We have not decided. Emma says, maybe I can't swim because of my asthma. I mean, that's definitely, I think that would be a scary thing. You know, it's one thing to have an asthma attack if you're um, not in the water, you know, to handle it. But I would think it would be very scary if something were to happen when you were in the water. Nancy says, I love floating on my back. Deep inhale and exhale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew, I knew the proper way. To try to float it just didn't always work <laughs> usually I would have to kind of hold my breath and even then my feet would start to sink down so it's like I'd be flat and these are my feet and they would just slowly start to sink down while my upper half stayed above the water I was pretty good at treading water though that was one that I did pretty well at and I remember at camp you would have to swim down to the bottom of the lake floor um, and I think where we were, it was probably maybe eight feet deep, eight to nine feet deep. So you'd have to swim down there. You'd have to pick up a big rock and you would have to tread water holding the rock. <laughs> that was part of the swim test. So that's why I didn't like swimming lessons. I was like, this, this feels more like torture than fun. Hello, Lita. Tracy said, I know I missed it. I, I'm guessing you said you missed the um, eight and nine millimeter release. I'm guessing that's. Ellen said she loves the new eight and nine millimeter hooks. And Lita says, I can't wait to get my eight millimeter hook. I think, Lita, you got one, right? Um, and you got the blue, I think, because you had gotten a blue. Didn't you get a blue ombre, the bigger hook? And then you came back and got... Um, the uh, eight millimeter. I think you got the last one. I think you. I think you had the last order um, of what was available. So, yeah. I'm excited though. I think you know the more we have time to sit and think and you know brainstorm, we really do come up with some fun stuff. You know, we have thought about doing a throwback release. Um, if you guys don't follow my husband on Instagram, you can find him on there as at will print the number four credits. So will print for credits. And, um, he posted a couple days ago, a, uh, pictures of some of our old hooks. So when we first started trying to design the hooks that we currently sell, um, it was a learning process and they, there were quite a few kind of beta hooks that we printed that we never sold. It was just trying to figure out the design. Um, so he posted some of those and we've thought about trying to rework them now that we have so much more knowledge and skill on the 3D design software and the 3D printers um, doing a release of throwback style hooks, you know. So um, that may happen. Uh, we thought that could be really fun. Let's see. Emma said, I always wanted to be a mermaid when I was growing up and I turned into a crazy yarn lady at 35 years old. Yes, so I am 34 today. Um, I had to remember, I always forget how old I am, which is kind of nice. It makes me not really care as much. I've never been one of those people that didn't want to tell people my age. Um, so, you know, uh, but yeah, I think we're all crazy yarn ladies here. Pretty sure. Lita said, yes, I got the 18 millimeter blue ombre and ordered the eight millimeter blue Cosmos. Uh, I've been a crazy yarn lady since college. So I don't think I really started hoarding yarn until I started selling um, at craft shows regularly because that's when I really started buying in bulk which made the biggest difference. Um, 
I'm still pretty good about not going crazy with my yarn purchases. I feel like I do have to have something particular in mind. Um, because I make larger projects like cardigans and things, it's easier for me to say no to yarn because I would want to buy enough to make like a full cardigan. So if I'm going to buy yarn, I need at least like five to 700 yards of it, of the same yarn. Um, so if they don't have enough, then it's easy for me to be like, okay, then I don't need it. Um, or if it just adds up way too quickly and I'm like, no, I don't want to spend that much on, on that yarn. Um, and I've tried to say, okay, if I don't have room in my yarn stash in here, our house is just too small. Like there's nowhere really good to kind of store it if I'm not going to use it right away. Um, especially right now, cause I have like Tupperware bins full of finished products that I still kind of need to just unravel and either reuse the yarn or figure out somewhere I can donate it or if I'm ever going to go to a craft show again and sell them. Okay, let's see where I'm at because this is looking quite long. I may have overshot it. One, two, six, seven, nine, ten. I did by two rows. <laughs> I figured that was. I was in the zone. Um, two, three, four. Yeah, so I overshot it by two rows. So I'm going to frog this back by two rows. See, I get to talking. So I needed 26 rows. All right, so there is my completed hood. So you can see here's the body of the cardigan. Here is the start of the hood. And the hood's gonna look really skinny. Um, you know, this is obviously not wide enough to be a full on hood, but the front border is what adds the uh, depth to the hood. So this is what it looks like. Um, when you reach the end, see I've got my end loop and this is still attached to my yarn ball. Um, when I decide how long to make my um, tail, because I'm gonna be folding this in half, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fold it in half like that, and I'm gonna seam this, I want my yarn to be double this length, okay? So this is easy because I can open this up, pull the yarn across, and I'm gonna cut it about this long. So I've got my handy dandy little scissors. I'm going to snip that yarn and then take my hook and pull this through. All right, so there is my tied off hood with my tail that is nice and long so that I can sew my hood together. All right, and I don't know if you guys have ever seen these, these little travel scissors. So you open them up and you push them in and then you push them together and that's what they look like. So I sell uh, notions kits in my Etsy shop and this is, I include these little scissors like that and I include stitch markers, tapestry needles, um, and a little stitch counter, like a digital stitch counter and a measuring tape and it's all in this cute little plastic box with one of my stickers on the top but I love these now. So I, I take these everywhere and they're all in different little colors and you can get different color combinations for your little notions boxes. Um, but these are super fun and they actually work. I was, I'm, I want to start keeping them cause I'm not going to give them all away or sell them all cause I want them. Okay. So I do want, just in case someone is on here and they're a beginner or they're watching the replay, I am going to turn the camera around for this part because I am going to sew up the top of the hood, and then I'm going to attach my yarn for the front border. So that'll be something that I can showcase uh, during this portion of the video um, to help anyone who is just starting out. So I'm going to clear some space. So what time is it? Oh yeah, I've got 10 minutes. That is more than enough to show you guys this. So I'm going to lay my newly finished cardigan out on the table. So I'm going to get this all ready before I flip the camera so you guys can see everything. All right. And let's go for an adventure together as I move. This has been super helpful. I do have to say, um, this new 
set up. All right, and let me flip the camera around. And that's our next door neighbor's house. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, whoops. Sorry, I'm gonna cover this up for a second while I turn this arm. There we go. Okay, it's not gonna be super high up, but that's okay. I'll show you what everything is. So let me tighten up all of these knobs. Got one more knob. And let's see if that'll hold. Perfect. Okay. So here you can see these are the shoulders. This is the newly finished hood. I'll pull this down so you guys can see. So if I flip that hood up, I've got my openings here. These are the front inside of the front panels, which the front border will start down here. But you can see this is nice and long and I have my tail to sew that in. So what I like to do, let's bring this down here. I like to make a triangle like this. All right. And then I'm going to grab my tapestry needle. Let's grab this one. This is one of our flexi needles. So that's pretty fun. And then of course it all matches. I feel like this project I've had a fun little matching set. All right, so I'm going to thread my needle. And this is the side that it ended on. So my first stitch is gonna be into this side and I am going to go from the underside of the stitches out the top. So from the inside to the outside, there you go. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the side from the inside to the outside. And actually, so since these are half double crochet stitches, you can see there's two sets of these. There's this set here. And if you turn it this way, there's this set here. And since I went through these outer two here, I'm going to do that here as well. So I'm actually going to go underneath this set of V's right here. Okay. So I'm going to pull that through. And then same thing on the next one. I find my next stitch here. and go from the inside to the outside. And again, inside to the outside, underneath two stitches or two pieces of yarn, that nice V there. I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna pull it tight. So from here, I'm gonna hold the end of my work right here and I'm gonna pull that tight. And you don't want to cinch your work. You don't want it to start kind of cinching in. You want it just tight enough to start to hide the stitches, which since this yarn is not a contrasting color, it's gonna hide itself pretty automatically anyway. So I'm gonna continue this all the way up. And I'll usually do three to five stitches and then pull tight. Again, holding on to a nice chunk of the bottom of my work. I know I'm not talking as much during this part, <laughs> trying to focus, but it doesn't take too long. And this is a quick, a quick sew. There we go. And pull tight. This part can get a little tricky, um, but this is also where I like having the flexible needle um, to kind of bend that needle into <laughs> into the stitches where I want it to go. I'm pulling that tight and I can see there's still a couple of stitches up here. So I'm gonna kind of open that back up so I can find there's that one. I'm gonna do at least one more. Let's see. I'm trying to find two, two pieces to go under. I don't even know if that's a stitch but that will work to cl close up that gap. All right, so pulling that tight, I can kind of cinch that down a little bit if I want to. Um, there at the end, 
All right, and then I'm going to poke that yarn to the inside here. Okay, and then you can flip this out to tie that end off, which I'm going to go ahead and do just so that I don't have to deal with it later. So I'm going to cut that off shorter. And I'm going to thread this through a couple of stitches just to get it away from the top a little bit more. Don't want to cinch that down either. And then I'm going to untwist the yarn so I can separate it. This is a three ply. So I'm going to have two on one side, one on the other. Thread the single strand underneath a piece of yarn. And then I'm going to quadruple knot it. And I'm not going to squeeze too tight on that first knot. But on the second knot, I'm going to cinch that up a little bit more. I may even do a third knot here. That's fine. Nobody's going to see that knot. It's at the back of the hood. All right. Snip that. Flip it back inside out. And this is more of like a pixie style hood. It tends to have a little bit of a point to it. But if I pull this down, you guys can see what that looks like. So you've got the collar all the way up to your now sewn together hood. Okay, woohoo. All right, so now I will show you guys the pattern. So this was time to sew up the top of the hood. I used mattress stitch. At this time the hood will be too shallow, but that's where the front border comes in. So again, you can see it's a very shallow hood. <laughs> it's not gonna cover, but maybe half of your head. So um, the front border is what completes the hood. And if we look right here, these are the instructions for the front border. I am again ignoring the color references. Um, we've got join at the bottom corner of your jacket with color number five, and then half double crochet up the inside of the front panel, around the edge of the hood, and back down the inside of the other front panel. I do not have stitch counts on this. Um, because that also depends on if you added length to the jacket, if you added length to the hood, um, and where you decide to place your stitches. So what's important about adding the front border is to just pay attention to whether your um, stitches are causing the front border to pull um, or if it's causing it to pucker like this. Okay, because that'll mean you're adding too many stitches into the rows. Um, when you're looking down at your pattern, you're going to want to join on the uh, left side here. So this would be my right side looking down at it. You're going to want to join into the left side because you're going to want to work your half double crochets up the inside. If you join over here, you're going to have to work your half double crochets up the inside um, instead of into the outside. Okay, so I'm going to turn it a little bit because this is where I'm going to join into this very bottom stitch right here. All right, let's grab my working yarn. Of course, it's all tangled. Oh, tangled messes of yarn. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my slip knot. There we go. Insert my hook. I like to, this is how I usually join. I put the, the knot on my hook. I insert my hook into the place where I want to join. Oops. I yarn over, pull it through, and then pull through that slip knot that was on my hook. So now I'm joined and I'm going to go ahead and chain one. And I'm going to place a half double crochet into the same space that I joined. Now, in most cases, um, with half double crochet rows, you can aim to put one stitch per row, okay? So I've got one stitch in this first row, so I can place another stitch. This would be my second row where it's got this ridge. So at the end of this row, I can place my next half double crochet stitch. And then the next row is here, so I can place it into the side of this one. And I continue that way. So for me, I'm going to try to place 
If I had 22 rows in my front panel, I'm going to try to place 22 stitches across the front. So, um, and it won't be a full 22 because of the um, hood took up, yeah, I think five, five spaces here, right? But I'm going to try to, and you can see here, this would be one with this ridge, two in the middle, three, four, five, like that. So you're going to try to place um, a half double crochet on the edge of each of these rows, and that will help make sure that you don't place too many and create a puckering effect or too few and create it to um, make it pull on your fabric. All right, so I'll do a few more of these just so you guys can see my placement. And I try to get underneath at least two strands of yarn. So you can see this is two strands right here. So if that's where I'm going to place it, I think I actually got underneath three, which is fine. All right. And that is how that front border will start to work up. All right, just like this. And I'm gonna work those half double crochet stitches all the way up. Once I get to this corner, I'm just gonna round the corner and work up the side of the hood all the way around, placing half double crochets all the way around, rounding the corner again and going down. And I am not placing increases anywhere so like some of my patterns i'll place an increase in the corner no increases here it's just working around unless you just want to if you want to add an increase in the corner for for style or for preference you can do that um, but i'm just going to work half double crochets all the way around and when i get to the bottom here i'm going to chain one turn and work back around and depending on your size um, i'm going to do eight total rows on mine okay and you can do more or less try it on as you go so that you can see what the front border and what the hood are looking like with however many rows you're doing or and add more or less as you prefer this is just try on as you go so that is where we are at I am going to go ahead and turn it back around uh, and we are at the end of our session anyway but let's turn it Bum, bum. There we go. And I think I can just sit down right here. Yes. Okay. I tighten these knobs up again. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool though. I mean, even though I have to move it, it does make it a lot easier for me to just turn the camera up and show you guys what's happening. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining in. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you're watching the replay, I hope you're finding it helpful for completing uh, your first Dobby cardigan. Um, please be sure to share your uh, info in the Facebook group. I mean, your progress in the Facebook group. Oop. This is moving. Uh, there you go. Uh, share your progress in the Facebook group if you want. Um, and I think that's all for now. Uh, I am going to be going live on Friday for part seven. Um, of the Dobby cardigan, which will be finishing up the front border. What's next? Bottom border. And I think the sleeves are last. Let's see. Where's my last page? Yes. So adding the sleeves. So I have a feeling this will probably have two more installments before I complete it. Maybe three. Um, but we're getting there and I'm, I'm really loving getting to do this with you guys and see your progress. And I'm hoping it's helpful for people who are still learning how to read patterns. Cause I know that's, that can be a difficult thing to overcome when you're first starting to crochet. Um, oh, I did want to share with you guys in case you were interested. We just added, let's see. We just added new stitch markers to the shop and we've got cats. Whoop, I got a little piece of plastic fuzz. So these are like a sunshine yellow of our um, cats. We have sunshine yellow sheep, these little guys. That's their little opening under the ear. But that's the little sheep. And then we also added lime green cats. 
So these are all new. Um, if you need some new stitch markers, you want to check them out. These are in the Etsy shop now. And I did just start adding some apparel to my Etsy shop. Here's the difference. Um, if you guys have ordered from Bonfire, so if you've ordered clothing from my Bonfire shop, Bonfire tends to take a little bit longer, but you tend to have more options on the different things that you can purchase. So I can include, you know, more colors and more options in one place. Um, but on Etsy, the orders will ship a little bit faster. It might be a little more expensive depending on um, the product that I put on there, but I just added a bunch of new tank tops. So if you like um, the designs and you want some summer tank tops uh, for the warmer weather coming up, there is a flowy tank top that I just added that I think goes up to 2X. Um, couple different colors, couple different designs. If you would like one of my designs on a tank top, please reach out to me and let me know because I can easily add that to my Etsy shop. Um, but like I said, the difference is it'll ship a little bit faster. It might be a little more expensive than the bonfire ones, but not in, not in every case. Um, I might not have as many color options, but in some cases I might have more. So it's kind of the pros and cons tend to kind of weigh themselves out. Um, but check out my Etsy shop and see if there are any um, new designs that you'd like to see. I did add a baseball tee to the Etsy shop. Um, and I added a couple of unisex slash men's t-shirts to the Etsy shop because they had more sizing than some of the women's tops on Bonfire. So if you've been looking for um, more extended sizing in the tank tops, I think we have some good options in the Etsy shop now. So check them out. If you have questions, reach out. Um, but that's been really fun. I'm continuing to add new designs to the Etsy shop um, so that people have that option. And like I said, those tend to ship out faster. So if you are looking to get something a little bit more quickly um, and you see something you like, and again, if you see something um, or if there's a design you want and you don't see it on Etsy and you'd like to get it quickly, just let me know and I can put the listing out. So just working on building the inventory and, and giving you guys some fun options. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for now. So I will see you guys on Friday on Instagram. If you're not on Instagram, you know, I'll post the video here uh, to YouTube once I'm, once I'm finished uh, with the live. Um, and then I will be back again next Tuesday. So until next time, happy hooking friends. Bye. Have a great week.